Welcome back to the Pro Sports Podcasters on YouTube. My name is Corbett Ron. Most of you know me as Kobe from the podcast. And today I want to talk about why you should be signing up using the link below in the description to the So Rare Gold Cup. Now what this is, is a fantasy world cup on an NFT platform. And it's absolutely free to play. It doesn't cost you anything to get involved. And even if you're not a big fan of soccer slash football, depending on where you are in the world, you can still do well here because the way to play it is very simple. And I've actually got an article that I've written on how to play and how to construct your team and that sort of thing on our website. I'll leave a link to that in the description as well. But what I'm going to go over today is how I constructed my team. And something that becomes very obvious is I'm represent, right? Obviously, I'm a fan of the Netherlands. My father is from the Netherlands. He played professional soccer in the Netherlands. I played soccer myself. And I've always watched them at every single World Cup or Euro Cup. And as a fan of the Netherlands, the World Cup is a bit of a love-hate situation for me. And those of you that follow international soccer obviously know why. The Netherlands owns the record to the most lost World Cup finals. But that also means they had to get there. And there are a couple of those finals that really, everyone knows this, they probably should have won. So although they do not have a World Cup trophy in their trophy case, they have a World Cup pedigree. They are some of the best players in the world, always have been. The soccer school at Ajax is probably the best soccer school in the world. You can debate that, but most people agree with me. And as a result of this, my team has a couple of Dutch players on it. And we'll get into how you construct a team and how I constructed mine and why I chose the players that I did. And that'll help you understand how you can construct a team and you can go about putting together a roster that has a chance at winning this. And the prizes up for grabs here are ridiculous. You've got the typical merchandise, NFTs provided by, of course, so rare. You've got signed jerseys from the players competing in the World Cup. You've also got money, right? They've actually got cryptocurrency, ETH, up for grabs here and a considerable amount and a number of opportunities to win cash prizes in a tournament that costs you absolutely nothing to play. The grand prize is insane. It's a trip for two to Marseille, France, to play in a five-on-five -five competition with Zinedine Zidane, right? The headbutt seen around the world. <laughs> okay, so why you wouldn't get involved in this, even as a casual fan of soccer slash football, doesn't make any sense to me. And that's why I'm providing the link and a brief explanation on how I develop my team, plus a more in-depth information on how to develop a team on the website. So let's get into it. I'm going to go over my selections. Sure, it's going to be a little, little orange in development, but when you're talking about some of the best players in the world, it doesn't hurt to have a few on your roster. Let's go. So I'm going to begin on the upcoming game week page. And what you've got here is you've got the name of the tournament, the Glo Global Cup. You've got training. Training is something you can do with particular players that aren't actually playing in the active roster at the time. Every player earns experience as the tournament goes on. And even players that aren't playing can earn training experience. So once you're able to put together a training roster, any players that aren't playing, you just throw them in your training for that particular game week. We've also got here is the rewards. I just want to show you this quickly to show you what's up for grabs on any particular, in this case, group stage game week. So it wouldn't surprise me if the rewards kind of ramp up as we go along. But here you've got a number of commons that can be won. Now, commons will just be additional players that get added to your player pool that can be used later on in the tournament. I go in more a little more in depth into this in the actual article on the website. But what you're also going to notice is that you can win limited players and ETH, cryptocurrency. And to give you an idea, first place in any particular game week, you're looking at $3,819, sorry, not, euros in this case, uh, converted from ETH. And that's what's up for grabs. 
second place, third place, start winning ETH as well. But all the way to the top 5,000 can win limited NFTs. Now, these are not just common cards that are on the website. These are actual NFTs that you're going to own when this is all said and done, collectibles from the World Cup 2022 that you can then sell on the marketplace or just keep as a keepsake. So these have value also. And what you'll notice is that they give prizes all the way down to the absolute last position because as the tournament progresses and teams get knocked out, you're going to require some of these additional players to feed into your roster in order to make a a viable team. So you're going to be winning additional players all the way through it. Now, if I get back out of this, we'll get into setting up a team. And something I probably should have mentioned earlier was that you can only have two players in your initial eight off any particular team. Okay, so you can't have more than two players from any particular country or nation. And that can change as you go forward, but in the very beginning, you can't do it. So the most I can have as, you know, in players from Netherlands is two. And we'll get into it now. So I've already selected my players. I'm going to go on how I select my initial roster. Let's get to it. Now, what we've got here is you've got your five position roster. It begins with your goalkeeper. And the two goalkeepers I selected are Hugo Loris from France and Adam Davies from the United States of America. Now, the reason I've done this is Hugo Loris is an expensive goalkeeper. One, probably one of the top three goalkeepers in the world. Two, he's on France, which is, you know, one of the favorites to win the World Cup. So he comes with a pretty hefty cost. But I wanted a solid goalkeeper, so I selected him. Adam Davies, U.S., if they're like 50-50 to actually move past the group stage, they're also not the best defensive squad in the world. So he didn't come with that much of a cost, but really, I don't, I hope to never have to use him, okay? It's my plan to play Hugo Loris at least every single game during the group stage. Once we get into the round of 16, depending on who I've actually acquired winning different players, maybe I'll switch him up then, but for the time being, he's my guy unless he gets injured. Then we get to defender, and I've got best defender in the world, Virgil van Dijk, and I'm not saying that because I'm a fan of the Netherlands. It's a, it's a fact. He's the best defender in the world. So I selected him. But I also selected a very good young defender in Lissandro Martinez from Argentina. He's got opportunities too. So the reason I did that is because, first of all, Virgil van Dijk, van Dijk has a history of injury. This is like the first World Cup where he comes in and actually gets to play in this span of his dominance at defense because he's not actually injured. So you got to factor in that the possibility that you never know he could get hurt here. So I wanted at least a decent defender to back him up. Plus, Lissandro, for his cost, he's a great defender. And Argentina, again, is favored in their group. And for a fact, I'm going to go, it's actually a toss up here, really a toss up. I'm actually going to go with Lissandro Martinez. Because the Dutch have actually a, a sneaky, difficult match, the very first match against Senegal. Senegal's a powerhouse nation. Now we get into the midfield. In the midfield, I've got Portuguese midfielder and superstar Bernardo Silva, one of the top midfielders in the world. And then I've got Pape Sar, who is an up-and-coming star from Senegal. Okay, you know... Pape Sar isn't known by many, but he's got the ability to be a superstar at some point. He gets overlooked a bit just because he's from Senegal, but I think he's going to get some pretty decent playing time. He he may even surprise in a couple of these games, not the first game because they're, they're playing the Netherlands, but I like him as a pretty decent backup for very little points on their cost system. But I'm planning on running with Bernardo Silva the whole way. Just again, this is a situation where if something happens to Silva, I have a half-decent backup. Then we get into my forwards, and it's Memphis Depay. Okay? Memphis Depay is my favorite player in the world. The guy scores in bunches. So he's perfect for a format like this, because when he has a good game, he's going to give you a ton of fantasy points. The first game is against Senegal, and again, it's a tough matchup, but that means he's going to be asked to do a lot. He's going to be asked to play the majority of the game, this is, will not be an early substitution because he's. they're going to need him to score, right? They're going to need him to score to win this game. So I love him for the first game of the actual game weeks. 
And then you get your extra extra player. So the extra player is anybody you want, provided they're not a goalie. So my options here are Eric Maxim, Chupo Moting, Virgil van Dijk, and Pape Sar. So to me, this comes down between Eric Maxim, Chupo Moting, who is from Cameroon, or Virgil van Dijk. Again, Senegal is going to be tough. So I kind of want to play Virgil van Dijk, but I honestly think that Eric Maxim, Chupo Moting is going to be asked to do a lot for Cameroon. He is a superstar at Bayern Munich, and he's been scoring like crazy lately. He's had something, I don't know, eight or nine goals in the last eight or nine games. That's that's literally a goal per game, which is ridiculous, okay? Granted, that's what Bayern Munich, one of the best clubs in the world, versus playing for Cameroon, but they're against Switzerland, who is noted, notably they're considered to be a pretty de- decent defensive team, but they're not a powerhouse team. I like his chances of being force-fed the ball, and expected to score for his country. So I'm going to go with Eric Maxim Chukmoni. And those are the five I selected, but then there's one more thing you have to do. You have to select your captain. And whichever player you pick as your captain becomes the one that gets an additional 20% bonus on their fantasy points. So when I look at this roster, I think to myself, Lissandro Martinez has a pretty easy match, but he's not a superstar yet. Bernardo Silva is... Just amazing in midfield, and he's got a fantastic team around him. He's maybe someone I should go for. Memphis Depay, right? This is a boomer bust type player. If I go with him and he has a big game, it's going to be insane. I will not go with Eric Maxim because he's on a weak, a weaker nation. So you never know how well they're going to they're going to do. But I also have Hugo Loris. Okay, I have literally one of the top nations in the world, one of the top goalies. And they have a very easy first match. Okay, their first match is... It's, it's going to be simple for them. They're playing against Australia, and Australia literally was the last team to qualify for the World Cup. They just squeaked their way in there. So I'm going to go with Hugo Loris because I think France is going to have a very easy time with Australia. They're not going to concede any goals, which means big points for him. He's not going to be asked to do much, but that's fine when it comes to a goalie. And... That's it. That's that's my squad. That's who I'm going with. And this is the kind of decisions you're going to have to make each particular game week. So when you're designing your squad, what I would say to do is make it top heavy. Okay, make it top heavy. I was lucky in that I could have a couple of sort of second tier players that could pop only because I didn't select one of those obviously huge superstars. Right. I did not. I did not select a Lionel Messi is going to cost you a ton of points. Or a Kylian Mbappe is going to cost you a ton of points. Or a Kevin De Bruyne is going to cost you a ton of points. I stayed away from those players just so I could give myself a few additional points to to grab someone like a Pape Sar or um, Eric Maxim Chupomoting. Someone like that who could have a real relevant role and a fantasy relevant role at this particular tournament. Click the link below. Get yourself in this tournament. I want to see you win some great prizes. And if you do sign up, reach out to us by our email and we'll send you a link to join our private uh, tournament happening within the tournament and that qualifies you for some additional prizes. We'll just send you a link so that your team can not only be entered in their Global Cup, but it's going to be in the PSP Insiders World Cup as well. Enjoy the tournament. Enjoy the World Cup. Have a fantastic time. And yeah, let's let's win some great prizes. Till next time.